While I focus so much on the entrance of the temple there, I've neglected to focus on the inside. And now I'm standing here, just in front of the mandapa. I uh, can hear my voice echoing slightly. I'm saying that because of the voices I heard, distinctly heard, a couple of days ago when I arrived. Um, and hearing this echoing sound is exactly what I heard at the time I was making that video. Um, so I'm even more convinced now that uh, it wasn't my imagination. I wasn't convinced it was my imagination anyway. But uh, there's always that little bit of doubt in one's mind, isn't there? Um, so, yeah, I'm even more convinced now that I heard voices. And, um, but there was absolutely nobody in here, so... Um, it excites me a lot because of what's going on here in the, in the story. And this temple is a rather... Um, quite bland temple, I suppose you might say. Not for me, but uh, it's quite small. Relatively small. And most tourists, they just literally come in through the entrance, turn their head around and walk back out again, which is great for me because uh, it gives me a lot more time in here. So, you know these interesting things, you see these columns here. This has uh, been replaced, basically. This is original. It's got these carvings on, and then you've got this, which has been crudely carved in modern times. To make look like these ones, the outer ones, but obviously they can't uh, carve these images into them because they, they, they didn't know what was originally on them and you certainly can't make them up. It's the Garparia and you can tell this is a Shiva temple because there is a statue of Nandi in here. Right there, unfortunately it's locked. Um, there's a linga in the back as well, I don't know if you can see that. Almost just. Um, but it stops people from coming inside, you get some, you get some dodgy people around. So, uh, at least it doesn't get damaged in any way. Guards don't come here very regularly, they pop their head in and wander off again usually. They're more focused on the bigger temples. I think I can hear bees or something. Yeah, there's a bee's nest around here. So these walls were much higher, they've been damaged a long time ago. A lot of Hampi was damaged when the uh, Vijayanagara lost the Battle of Talikota against the Deccan Sultanates, who rallied all sorts of uh, groups together to try and defeat them after a long war, many, many years of war. Uh, they got Afghans, Turks, Mongols, and brought a huge army into India finally defeated the Vijayanagara, who were by no means a pushover. And then they raised Hampi, or at least damaged as much of it as they could. Uh, they didn't do a very good job in that sense, because most of the temples and everything are still standing. They didn't completely destroy them, thankfully. And since then, a lot of these blocks have been used for building material in the village, which has now been stopped because, uh, well, since... Um, Hampi became a World Heritage Site. So, 
no more stealing of blocks to make houses. In fact, I'm lying in my um, hotel room at night and I'm noticing the concrete roof above me, which has got plaster and paint over it, uh, is not one complete lump of concrete like you normally get in Indian buildings. They are blocks <laughs> that have been laid down and they're a specific size and shape and they look distinctly like these wall blocks. <laughs> so I think uh, my hotel ceiling has been made from the blocks like these. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, a mandapa, which I've mentioned a few times, is basically a pillared hall. That's what it translates to. You see the boulders over there, and even there, and Matanga Hill there. And uh, this place is just magnificent. <laughs> the ambience of the whole of Hampi. I can hear my voice echoing again, that's so interesting. Um, so yeah, you come here in the early morning or late afternoon, you tend to get these temples to yourself and uh, really, really feel the ambience of these places. Which is why Hampi is my most favorite place in the world. Hopefully you can get some idea of what I'm talking about just from the sound. There's no sound, there's no people basically. It's just the birds and the flies and the mosquitoes and, and the temples. It's a great place to come and just sit and think and well, not even think, just let the energy of the temple envelop you and just uh, go with it. And then you really feel the energy of the temple. And that's why in some of these places you can really connect with the past. Maybe that's why I'm even hearing these voices, because I am doing exactly that. The sunset here is a phenomenal spectacle. Well, I hope you can get a glimpse of what I'm feeling standing here in this uh, silence, completely alone, and it is just a magical, mesmerizing, beautiful, I have uh, not enough words to, to describe these, this place. Not just this temple, but Hampi in general, I mean. It is the most magical place on earth. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this video.